We have a lot of acreage, and from time to time we need to move our herds around and move electric fencing back and forth. And electric fence posts can be either expensive or really badly made. So if you buy the ones like this, after a few weeks in the sunlight or a couple of moves, the little pins all snap off and they don't hold anything anymore. And if you buy the ones like this, they're really expensive, and those little fittings on there are also expensive. So you might be spending a lot of money for something that's really not that good of quality and pretty sloppy. So at HowWeDoStuff.com, we decided to do something better. And so we made these electric fence posts here. So we took a metal rod, a piece of half-inch rebar, and then we put an insulator over top of it. And what that insulator is, is really simple. This is half-inch PVC electrical conduit. And this is the gray stuff, the stuff that's designed for outdoors. You don't want to use just regular half-inch pipe because it'll break down in sunlight really bad. This stuff is specially treated so that it'll last in sunlight so it won't break down even after a long exposure to sunlight. So you'll notice this is a piece of half-inch rebar. We've cut it four feet long. You can make them varying lengths, but this is a good starter length, depending on how deep you want to go in the ground, how hard your ground is, and so on. Four or five feet is usually a good average. And this just barely fits over here. Just a little bit of clearance. So I've cut these pieces six inches long, and you notice they just slide over here like so. And what we're going to do is we're going to put some polyurethane or silicone on here, and then shove this down over top of it to whatever height we want them, and then we'll glue it in place, and then we'll wrap our electrical wire or tape around here. Okay, this is polyurethane. This is roofing sealant and it's kind of hard to work with. It's very stubborn to get out of the tube and it sticks on everything it sticks to, so if you get it on your hands, it's going to be really hard to get it off. But once it sticks on something, it really goes on well. So as you put it down over here, you just twist a little bit so it gets it firmly around there and then get it to where you want it to be and leave it. And you only have to glue the bottom end because this bottom end will be enough to hold this whole thing firmly forever probably. So now you just slide another one on down here Decide where you want it to be, so you want it to be about there. Put another pile of glue here, twist it down over it, about an inch or so over the glue, and leave a good pile on the bottom like I did over here. That way it won't move. And then you let this go set up good overnight, and then you drive this into the ground, like I'm going to show in a minute. You can put up three on these without having much trouble, but if you're going to use three, it's probably simpler just to use one whole stick, because the stick will slide all the way down over there, and just cut it off at ground level, and that'll be your insulator. So to drive it in the ground, you can either use a regular T-post driver, just drop it right over top of the whole thing, or just use a sledgehammer. You want to wear a glove with your hand that you're not using a glove hammer with, because if you don't, the vibrations from the bar will kind of be hard on your hands. Plus, if you accidentally miss and hit down like this, the glove will help a little bit. It's not enough. It's best just to avoid doing that. And of course, you'd want to wait overnight to do this so this will get hard and good. I'm just going ahead and hurry it through so I can film this right now. Now, once you got it in the ground about a foot, then we're going to start wrapping our wire around it. So ordinarily, I'd have one of the end of this wrapped up around the post already, of course. And then I'm going to take it around here, wrap it around twice. Make sure it laps down over itself like that so it'll hold tight. And if this is held tight on the other fence, this will not be very easy to move up and down, if it's even possible. So wrap it around like that. Now this is a concrete tie. You can get these anywhere concrete supplies are sold. They're used for tying rebar together to fencing and things like that in concrete pads, and also on roads and any places like that. So take these, bend one around here, you're going to go under it on one side and over it on the other side. Then bring it back around, hook your pigtail tool through it, and then just twist around like that. And then just twist it around like that so no one's going to run into it, just having it sticking out there. And then when this is tied onto something like that, it'll be very hard to move this. It shouldn't even move at all. This will be really tight. So that'll hold your tape in that position as long as you want it to be there. And then you can pick up this tape, pull this part out, pull that up, drive it someplace else, drop it back down over. That's all you need to do. And you can run two, three, five strands on this, however many you want. Now sometimes at the end of your run of electric fence, you're going to have a post like this. And you can tie to that, and that'll work fine. But most of the time, you can have a tree there, or you can have another type of fence there that's grounded, or something that's not insulated that you can't ordinarily tie to. So what we do is we take a piece of nylon rope, a quarter inch works fine, wrap it around here, and then tie this to that, and that makes a great insulator. It costs nothing. So to do that, make a simple knot. I like this one. Take both ends in the rope in this hand, and the loop in this hand, pull it around the post, drop it over, and then reach your hand through the hole, and grab the loop, and then push away from you like that. And then come back, and do it again. Around, through the loop, and push away from you. Now, pull it back like, to you like that, and there's your loop. And so with the electric fence side, you usually just pretend you're tying your shoes. You put it through here like this, pull it back around, tie like that, pull it back around again, reach through here, grab the loop, and pull the loop through, keeping hold of the other end. 
you basically have there is a shoelace knot. And that'll hold you good and strong. And you can stretch your fence from there. So I hope you've enjoyed learning how we do stuff. And I hope this idea helps you as much as it's helped us. And check back with howwedostuff.com for more exciting ideas.